We come with thankful hearts, ready to worship our Creator. Let us lift our voices in praise and open our hearts to the truth of God's Word. And this is in the moment thanking you as always for joining us on this lovely day the Lord has made and wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I just pray that the Lord Jesus Christ is leading the way through your days and evenings as we continue through this year, 2024. And we are excited this weekend because my son graduated college. We just thank God for that. I know you all have been praying for him as we have been praying for him as he's been praying for himself that he gets through and gets his degree. And we were up there this past weekend in Pennsylvania uh, in Pittsburgh to watch him go across that stage and as a father I couldn't have been prouder so uh, for Ricky this goes out to you congratulations and I know the Lord has only bigger and better things for you out there and it's a, a big congratulations to all of our college graduates this year who have gone across that stage who have completed the requirements to get that college degree and I just pray for all of you and all your dreams may they be fulfilled in accordance with God God's will for your life. Amen. Very excited time here in the Allen House, and I'm sure it is for you as well. So let's get started. Our morning scripture comes from 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7 reads as follows. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Amen. And maybe you're out there right now looking for that level of love in your life and you don't know where to start or who to come to to pray to or uh, or pray with so to speak well we here at, uh, in the moment we have a website called get-prayer.com get-prayer.com you can go there and submit your prayer requests right now and we can receive them and we can definitely pray with you and pray for you as well as have our subscribers do the same so we want you to know that resource is there it's a work in progress but nonetheless it is there for you to utilize as you go about your day praying in the name of Jesus Christ. And speaking of prayer, we're going to do that right now. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you thanking you always for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for all those who graduated this past weekend from their respective colleges and those who will graduate. We pray for the parents. We pray for uh, an ease of heart and mind. And we pray that they give the kids some space to pause and reflect and help them as they begin entering to the workforce. We pray, Father, for the zeal of these young graduates. We pray that, uh, that they don't get discouraged so quickly when things don't come as quickly as they thought they would. For we know this is not a race, it's a marathon. We ask you now, Lord, to pray for all of those around the world who are de dealing with dif different contingencies. Uh, there's a lot going on. Through all the joy, there's still a lot of pain as well. We pray for these campuses, Lord, as they, they're they protesting on terms that are deceiving and they don't even realize it. They're protesting on moral accounts that do not consider everyone, but only a few people. We ask you, Lord, to help the believer come into the middle and pray for all and set the example needed that you gave to us. For everybody does not believe in you, Lord Jesus, but help us be a light in that darkness to present the gospel in this world that has lost its way. These and all things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we are back. We are continuing our discussion on reaching out to Jesus. And our text today comes from John 15, 9 through 11. And we, as we talk about reaching out to Jesus for joy, we're in John 15, starting at verses 9, going to verse 11, which reads, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you, com if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you, this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your already blessed word. We ask you now to say what needs to be said and do what needs to be done at this time. Unlock your word. Reveal to us the things that we need to see in this text and read and digest. Help us be focused, Lord, at this moment in time. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. So like I said, we've been focused on the topic of reaching for the past couple of weeks. We've talked about reaching out to Jesus in pain. That was a difficult one for many of you. I got a lot of feedback from that. Uh, and we also talked about reaching through distractions. And now we're going to talk about reaching out to Jesus for joy. And the reason we're discussing this is because God doesn't want halfway believers. He, he doesn't want you just reaching out to him when things are going wrong and when you need something and, you know, when you want to vent and all these things. He wants all of you. He wants to complete you, the you that he made in his image. So guess what? He wants you in the good and the bad, the wins and the losses. He wants you to reach out for that joy as well. As a, along with everything else you're reaching out through, he wants you to reach out for the joy. Are you doing that this morning? Because if there's a part of your life Jesus Christ is not involved in, then you have not reached complete submission and surrender. There's something you're still holding on to that you think you can do that you don't need God to do or you don't want God to do. Maybe you've decided that it may not be something God should be worried about and that you can Come alongside him in the responsibility when God can be God all by himself. I've heard people say, well, I'll go to God only for the important stuff and I'll take care of everything else. It's like your child coming to you saying, you take care of the food and shelter and I'll deal with uh, when I go to bed and when I eat and when I get up for school. Now, if you disagree with that, which I'm sure if you are a responsible parent, you should, because a child shouldn't have that much freedom when you are trying to build them into a mature adult. You want them to listen to you in all your wisdom and all your guidance in growing up in the house. The Lord Jesus Christ requires just as much from anyone who has declared Jesus as Lord and who has come into relationship with him. And in the response to everything he has done, is doing, and will do for us here on this earth, in this thing called life, we reach. It's the one thing we keep talking about this past month in regards to reaching. We reach through the pain, physically, mentally, spiritually. We reach through the distractions in the same way. Because we're looking for something that can only be found in Jesus Christ. Joy. This joy is something created by God through Jesus Christ and it's handed down to us because he loved us to take the sins of us to the cross with him and to die there and be resurrected. Now, the, di the, dictionary, the dictionary defines joy as this, to experience great pleasure or delight. Now, if that's all it is, then the world can clearly provide you with everything that's contrary to God's will that can make you feel good. Yes, there are things out here in this world that can give you joy, but of course it may be contrary to God's will. And it might be joy, but is it eternal joy? Well, we see what we have here on this earth, we have temporary joy in a lot of things that we experience. That's why drugs doesn't work. It's temporary joy. That's why alcohol doesn't work. It's temporary joy. That's why pornography does not work. It's temporary joy. I can experience joy going to the pizza place and getting my favorite pizza, a large pepperoni with extra cheese and a little bit of bacon sprinkled on the top, and I can experience joy. So it doesn't always have to be something nefarious. It can be something just that I'm doing within the realms of the law. <laughs> but still, it only lasts for a brief moment in time because eventually I'm going to get full and I'm going to go to sleep. That's just being real. So obviously there are things here that can do that. But what I'm talking about is a bottomless supply of joy that consistently fills your soul daily and not just meeting physical needs. You never get tired of it and your desire to stay in that state forever is there because it's peaceful there. Who needs peace out there this morning? 
who needs some just silence? And have you ever just sat in your house with everything off and just sat there and just laid back with your eyes closed and just talking to God? Man, that's some peace right there. Your mind can think, your heart can feel something else other than pain on a situation, maybe a physical pain. It can do something else. My friends, that comes from the Lord and the Lord only. And so, for this joy, we reach. This level of joy cannot be found in the natural, but begins in the supernatural and to be manifested into the natural. How is this manifested into the natural? By reaching, by our faith. And because we believe that Jesus Christ is the author and finisher of our faith, we reach out in faith. Not because we're doing something to get to heaven. That's been done. We do it in response to what Christ has done for us. We reach out because we know that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. We know this. Because of Jesus... I should reach out to find the church. Because of Jesus, I should be inspired to dive deeper into my word to find the answers to life. Because of Jesus, I should look to those who also are on the road to the cross who desire the same answers and look to strengthen their relationship and grow in their relationship every day. Because of Jesus, I should want to be baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Because of Jesus, I should want to participate in my church community, not to be made to or sold the benefits of doing so. I should, we should, just because of what he did for us. And we should be doing this because we reach out to an all-loving God and Father that hears us when we call in pain, when we call out in distress, when we're reaching through the distractions, and when we're looking for the joy. So are you reaching for the joy in Christ this morning? I had someone tell me that I should take some credit for the things that I've done, that I've worked in life. And I said, well, that's all God's. I was, just, I was just paying attention. And he said, well, that makes you sound weak. I said, no, that makes me smart. For it is written in Psalm 511, but let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them that those who love your name may rejoice in you. I'm glad to take refuge in the Lord thy God. I talk about it daily how God got me through and the things that he has given me. I pray for the protection daily for me, my family, my friends, and for those who speak the mighty name of Jesus Christ, who will let the world know that I rejoice in the presence of my Father in heaven. So we come to John 15, and Jesus takes everything we've talked about and brings it into the thought process of connection. And as he describes that connection as him being the true vine, we see in verse 1, he explains how God is the gardener and does all the pruning. Jesus goes to verse 5, breaking down the connection in terms of being the vine and we the branches. And then the text takes a shift. Jesus has to find who he is, who we are, the connection. And then we see the second part of verse 5 and begins the options. How do we know their options? Because of the word if. Jesus is not going to make you reach. He's not going to make you keep the connection, let alone create one. That's why it is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You are the one that must accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. You are the one that must understand that you are a sinner that needs saving. You are the one, not your mother, not your father, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. That's what the songwriter said. This is an individual relationship with Jesus Christ. And as a result of that, you've got to make the choices. It says if. 
And from that portion in verse 5 all the way to verse 7, notice that each verse begins with if. Why? Because you got to make choices. If you want to bear godly fruit, good godly product, then you got to remain connected to the source that gives you the nutrients you need to bear that fruit. But that's a choice as well. And that source is Jesus Christ. If there are things you want in this life, then you've got to remain connected to the one who can provide what is necessary to get those things, Christ. And it's not just for your benefit, it's to show the world who God is through what he has done for you and to reveal to the world that you are a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what do we do with these blessings? Jesus tells us this in Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. In other words, you are blessed in your earthly reasoning to reflect spiritual reasoning. And if you're going to remain connected, we've got to reach out in our faith to Jesus Christ in knowing that through the pain, through the distractions, we do come out of this entering into a search for his joy. Because it's one thing to get through something and never see joy. You can get through it. I know people out there that are in pain, who have been frustrated, marriages ain't going right, the bills ain't getting paid on time, the kids not acting right, and you get through it, praise the Lord. But even on the other side of that dark storm, you still can't find the sunshine. You still don't observe the blue skies, the flowers blooming, because you're not looking for the joy. You're looking for joy in other things. I don't know what those things are. But I'm asking you to reach out for the joy through Jesus Christ. And if we're going to remain connected, this is what we have to do. We got to reach. But what does that look like, though? What does that look like? Let's let's break this down. First of all, there's the thought of staying loved. When we reach for the joy in Jesus Christ, we're staying loved. Uh, John 15, 9, if you look at that verse there, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you, now remain in my love. Our first observation is reaching out for, to Jesus for joy means recognizing that remaining in his love involves embracing the deep, unending love that the Father has for Jesus and choosing to dwell in this love consistently. Jesus gives here two statements and a command. First, he tells us he is emulating the love that God has for him unto us. And then he says for us to remain in his love. Okay? So we see there in that verse, he lets, it, lets us know the Father loves him. And then the second statement, he says, so I have loved you. So he is emulating what God is doing with him with us. And then that then there's that third statement, that's a command. Now remain in my love. Now what does it mean to remain? Let's look at this word. We know it's a verb, and it means to stay in the same place or condition. When Jesus tells us to remain in his love, it means to stay where his love is and stay in the condition of his love. The problem the world has in remaining in the love of Christ is they do not like the source of that love, which is God through Jesus Christ, and the condition of his love, which is knowing he loved us to the point that he, meaning Jesus, died on a cross for our sins so that we would not have to face the wrath of God for our sin. And we humble ourselves to this daily never thinking we could be more than God. Remaining is the word here because we've all been a victim of our own devices of moving past God when things are going good and not really hearing the voice of the Lord at all because things are going well. It's always that running joke how when things are going good, no one's praying, no one's talking to God. But oh, when things are going bad, we got we break out the hymn books, the old hymns. Precious Lord, take my hand. <laughs> Leave me on, help me stand. Y'all y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all breaking out the amazing grace and you, you're breaking out the eye on the sparrow. You're breaking out the hymn hymns. Not none of this new age stuff. You're breaking out. You need to feel something when you're going through something. You need to feel like you're really in worship. You need to connect with those words. Y'all know what I'm talking about out there. What happens? You got excited and you failed to keep discipline 
to keep those emotions within the confines of how Christ defined your joy. And before you know it, the troubles are back again. Why? Satan saw where the split began between your joy in Jesus Christ and your flesh thinking that you can amend those conditions. That's what happened. You can be honest. That's exactly what happened. But nonetheless, though, we are brought back in. Once we recognize, we get brought back in by Christ. He, he teaches us. He guides us. That's why sometimes you got to go through those things to truly understand the presence of Christ in your life. But not only is there the thought that we're going to be stay, we're going to be staying love. There is joyful obedience. We look at John 15, 10, reaching out to Jesus for joy means understanding that obeying his commands is not just a duty, but a pathway to staying intimately connected with his love, mirroring how Jesus remains in the father's love through obedience. What a concept. Just as I said, you cannot change the terms of the cross because you want more. Ask Jesus if you desire more. Ask under his conditions and not yours. And watch what happens. You'll get the desires of your heart. But through the conditions that Christ has laid down. And if you believe that, you'll receive it. But you can't do it on your terms. The only reason people do not do this when they know what they're asking for is not godly and they want to experience it under a godly condition. Now, does that make sense to you? That's how things are done in the dark. I have this great relationship with Jesus, but there's this one thing I really want to do in my joyful happiness in the presence of God, but I also know it's wrong, but since I'm doing good right now, let me partake and he'll forgive me, but I will. I would have had my fun. Friends, that is foolish thinking. Foolish. Reaching out with Jesus for joy means I want to abide in the joy defined by him and him alone. I don't need nothing else. Nobody else but Jesus. He'll produce the fun in the sun. And who knows? I might even get a chance to tell people how I got there in the first place. When they're wondering why I can live the life that I'm living, why I'm in this peace that goes beyond understanding, it may prompt the question, how did you do it? How did you get there? It seems like I'm working every day to get to where you are and you're doing half of what I'm doing. What is it? Well, friends, is Jesus. It's definitely not Rick because uh, I'm nature's D student. It's the Lord that gives me everything I have. It's the Lord that blessed my son to get his degree. It's the Lord that's blessed me with a successful marriage of 20 plus years, folks. This is not me. This is, this is Jesus that's doing this. This is where the joy comes from. I am a partaker, a participator in this joy because I remain in the conditions that God has set for the joy. And when you do that, you'll be there forever until you die. He'll produce that fun in the sun. I guarantee it. And when you understand about being able to stay loved when you're in and when you reach for the joy of Christ, you stay loved and then you understand the joyful obedience. Then you get down to this complete joy. You understand that you're going to stay loved in the joy when you reach for it through Christ. Then you understand the obedient nature of that joy. Stay within the realms and the conditions Christ has, has given you, given me to do this. And then we find ourselves in complete joy. That's in verse 11. What did he say? I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Reaching out to Jesus for joy means, finally, that the teachings of Christ are designed to implant his own joy within us, making our joy full and complete as we live out his truth in our life. It's not just us. This is Jesus Christ. We are submitting our lives, our livelihood, everything we touch to the Lord so that he can complete this work in us to be a light out in the seas of sin and despair that the world is producing. My joy 
is complete inside of me because the Lord completes it. I'm not going to beat myself up each time I fall, each time I fail, each time I say or do something I shouldn't say or do. And then knowing that when I reach for the joy found in Christ, I can confess that I'm a sinner saved by the grace of Christ. And through proper repentance and confession, he forgives me, but not to keep doing the wrong that I do, but to change and get on track in fellowship with him. Some people out there believe, and this is a weird belief, and I'm going to do it really quick. Some folks believe that because you're Christian, you got to forgive them forever. Yes, we do want to forgive. However, there should be a pathway correction on their side. They should be repenting. And if they don't repent, then your relationship is deception because they keep abusing you and you keep forgiving and they keep abusing you. Eventually, you got to put some boundaries up. The forgiveness is for you to release it to the Lord and let the Lord deal with that. But you got to take your hands off the situation. You really do. You got to put some healthy boundaries up and let them know if you're not going to change from this unrepentant sinning way, then we got to break fellowship for a little while until the Lord can work with you and maybe check in on them and see how things are going. But don't sit there and deal with that. That's not healthy for you. It's not healthy for them. And they need to understand the call to repentance because love isn't just love. Sorry. Love isn't just love. Love is through God, through Christ Jesus. And Jesus Christ came to earth to call sinners to repentance. That's the only way into heaven. Repent and be saved. This joy provides a pathway of correction road to peace, a domain to dwell in the presence of the Lord. If you're reaching out to the joy of Christ today, then you got to stop overthinking your position with Jesus and know that Jesus is in your heart and the joy you cannot explain comes from him and him only. Are you going to reach for the joy in Christ today? Because it's time to stop reaching for the world's joy and reach for the joy in Christ that can do more than just give you physical satisfaction, but spiritual fulfillment in knowing that you are in a relationship with Jesus Christ. And when you die, you know where you're going because you've experienced the joy with him here on earth. And now you will experience with him this joy in heaven. And if you're out there right now, you know you, don't, you, you haven't experienced this joy. You know nothing about this joy. I want you to contact us via the information provided earlier in the show. We will definitely reach out to you. Be sure to let us know what your prayer requests are. We will pray with you. All right, but because I want you to experience this joy that I have, because it, it's not a temporary joy. This is the ongoing joy of what God has done for me and what he can do for you. But you, maybe you've been listening to the wrong people. I totally get that. We all get led astray by people who have forms of godliness, and then you realize they were not the one. You keep looking, you keep praying, and you keep searching for a community of believers who can present to you the joy of Christ. And most importantly, get into your Bible, get into your word, read for yourself. Come alongside someone that can help you understand the joy that they're living and experiencing so it's no longer a mystery to you. And you can come in out the rain. So until next time, may God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And God willing, we'll talk to you next week. You take care. <laughs>